Hello everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I have the second layout that I made using the May My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition Kit. For this layout, you can see here that I'm using a little cutout of a diamond shape and I'm using it as a template and I'm tracing some diamonds on some scrap pieces of paper. I'm going to be using the diamonds to create a composition on a 49 and market paper. So I cut out quite a few of these diamonds. I don't end up using the diamonds that I'm cutting out right now that are on this dotted piece of paper, but I make a whole bunch of diamond shapes and I end up using quite a few of them on my layout. At first I cut out some rather small diamonds and then I looked at them and I thought they might be a little too small, so I cut out some slightly larger ones. And these are the slightly larger ones. Now I'm using my scissors and I'm distressing all the edges. And I'm not roughing them up as much as I sometimes do, but I'm not doing it very lightly either. I do want the distress to be really obvious from just glancing at the layout. And you can see here the 49 and market paper that I'm going to be using. It's very beautiful and I wanted a lot of it to be visible. So you'll see how I do that in a little bit. So then I decided that I really like those smaller diamonds as well, layered on top of the larger diamonds. I hadn't planned that, but since I already had them cut out, I thought that the two would look nice together. So I'm going around, I'm distressing the edges of all the smaller diamonds. And again, I'm using my scissors. You can use a distress tool, but I just often find it's easier to just use my scissors because I always have those handy. Now I'm using a dauber and I'm using some Distress Oxide in black soot and I'm going to be inking the edges of all of the diamonds, the smaller ones and the larger ones. And the reason that I have two stamp pads there is that one is a little dried out and the other one is really fresh. So sometimes I forget which one is which and I probably should mark one of them in some way, although I would probably mix up the lids and I don't know if that would be that helpful. But in any case, sometimes I do want to have a little bit lighter application of ink. So I have not re-inked that ink pad for that reason. So now you can see that I'm using some foam. I'm cutting out the foam in a diamond shape and I'm just using the little piece as a template. And then I'm cutting it, a, the foam, I'm cutting a tiny bit smaller than the diamond. And then I'm doing a little bit of bending up of the edges of the smaller diamond once I have the two attached. And I just really like that shabby look to the little unit that I'm making there. So you can see here I have like a little assembly line of diamonds going on. And now I've assembled all of them. And now I'm going to put them down in a line on the layout. And I was thinking that there seemed to be kind of a natural line. And I was kind of placing the diamonds between those two butterflies. I kind of wanted the butterflies to show. It's not the end of the world if they don't, but that's kind of what I was thinking. And I spent a lot of time rearranging the diamonds and trying to figure out what color configuration I wanted to use here. So there is a lot of switching that takes place. At first I thought maybe I should do a pattern. Then I thought I don't want to have a pattern and I don't want it to look like I have a pattern. So I just kept switching them until I was happy with the balance. And the good thing is with these nice thick papers and the ATG adhesive, it was not hard to move them around because I did end up moving them around a little bit. The papers that I use to make the diamonds are from the Simple Stories, Simple Vintage Cottage Fields collection. And then as I mentioned, the background paper is a 49 and market paper. And as always, the papers, all the papers in these kits always go really well together. Simple Stories has been around for a long time. I feel like they were one of my favorite manufacturers way back when, when I first started scrapbooking. And I love the new direction they're taking with some of their lines. Last year in the My Creative Scrapbook Kit, we got a, another collection that was very similar called Simple Vintage Garden District. And I'm still in love with that collection and this one is very similar. I love the florals and I love the bright colors. I feel like they've really hit it out of the park and I like this new direction they're taking. Now you can see that I have 
trimmed off some of those diamonds and then I used the parts that I trimmed off to fill in some other empty spots. There wasn't any or there wasn't much foam underneath those little teeny tiny triangles that are on the edges there so I just added some foam to those and a little bit more adhesive and that way everything will look uniform. You could see that off to the right there's a big pile of leaves. I was taking some die cuts and I was kind of experimenting with painting them different colors using watercolor sprays. And this particular pile here on the left, this is a different pile of leaves, I had painted them using a lot of yellow and a lot of light green. And I thought these would look nice on the layout. So I decided that I was gonna go back in and paint them a little bit more, give them a little bit of a darker look. So here I'm adding some of this darker spray to these leaves that I've already painted. And I don't paint them a solid color. I like to put a lot of different colors down and just kind of blend them around, but not fully blend them. And I feel like that variety of color adds to the realism. When you look at a tree or any kind of foliage, you don't see one color green, you see lots of different colors. So I like to try to capture that in the die cuts. When I first painted the die cuts, they looked a lot darker. That's one of the things with watercolor sprays. At first they look a little bit darker, then they dry, and then they look a little bit lighter. So sometimes multiple layers of color are necessary. And sometimes you can't tell that until whatever you're painting is fully dry. I had first painted these several days before this, so it was clear when I looked at them that the color was a little lighter than I wanted and I needed to add another layer. This photo is a photo of my two daughters. I used a Creative Memories circle cutter to cut out the photo and then to cut a mat to go behind the photo. And then I was thinking that this would be a great layout to use some of this crocheted lace on. It's an adhesive lace. It's Recollections brand from Michaels. And this was purchased a very, very long time ago. I bought a whole bunch of it. I had tons and tons of it. I was thinking I'll never use up all this lace. I'm not sure why I'm buying it all, but I have to say I am almost done with a lot of the colors that I bought. I use it all the time. I love the edge and I love the way it looks on layouts. So here I'm popping up one side of the photo and I'm just not liking the way the lace is laying. I just felt that it was moving around too much. So I decided that I would clear off my little cutting mat here and I would grab my circle cutter again and I would cut a larger circle, larger than the mat, and then I would put that behind the photo and then the lace would be able to sit on that a little bit. And that ended up working out. Right now I'm putting some adhesive on the back and I'm just attaching it right down to those diamonds. But I had to put a little bit of foam on the left so that it would sit flat against the paper since the diamonds are popped up on foam. I'm just adding a little touch of glue to keep that little end of the lace down. And now I'm grabbing some self-adhesive pearls. This just seems to be my go-to for this lace. I just take either an enamel dot or a pearl and I stick it on each one of those little sections of the lace. I used to always be worried that the pearls or whatever kind of embellishments I was adding to this trim wouldn't stick, but they do stick really well. I was surprised. I thought that because it's a fiber that the self-adhesive pearls would not adhere, but they adhere really well. I'm adding a little sentiment to the bottom of the picture that will serve as a title. It says, live a life you love. And I wanted to put that down before putting the pearls down in that area so that I didn't add pearls behind where the little sentiment would be. But while I had that sheet of self-adhesive pearls out, I was looking at the tiniest one. There's a really small one that's on there. And I thought, that they would look nice on the smaller diamonds. So now I'm just going to each diamond and I'm adding a, that smallest pearl to the top and bottom of each one. I'm so sorry, this is a little blurry. It clears up really quickly. I just didn't wanna cut this out. I added two flowers and I'm also adding some foliage. I'm kind of planning here where I'm going to put those leaves that I had painted earlier. I'm gonna put some under the flowers. I'm gonna be putting some in the lower right-hand corner and then I put a few more toward the top of the layout as well. And there we go, now it's nice and clear again. I thought about it for a little bit. I didn't wanna overdo it, but I decided that I was gonna put those little pearls on 
each of the sides of the diamonds too. So I go ahead and add those at this point and they're so small that it really didn't make it overwhelming or too embellished. I feel like I don't have too much else on the page. So I was happy with how that looked with having the four pearls on each diamond in each corner. Now I'm adding in some of the 49 and Market butterflies. And I really love these butterflies and I feel like they really add a lot to the page. I'm inking them again with the black soot, Distress Oxide. And I just wanted to mention that the flowers that I put down, those two flowers, those were embellished a little bit by coating them with the Liquitex Heavy Duty Gel Medium in the matte finish. And then I dipped them in some diamond dust and it just adds a little bit of sparkle. You can see here that I'm popping up all of those butterflies using just a little bit of foam. I just like when the butterflies sit on top of the paper a little bit. In deciding where to put the butterflies on the layout, I am going to generally cluster them around the elements that are already there, near the photo, near those diamonds. I want the eye to be drawn to that area more than the other areas of the layout. Of course, you want the eye to go all around the layout, but I feel like it creates a little bit of confusion if there are things that are just scattered all around the layout for this particular composition anyway. I'm adding another little butterfly. This is kind of a side view of a butterfly, but I really wanted to have a lot of butterflies on this layout. So I popped him up or her up and included that butterfly as well. Just did a little trading of butterflies. And now I'm going to add some white splatters to the background, covering up my photo. And I didn't do any other mixed media on this layout. And I love these 49 and Market papers. I just feel like they don't really need too much. They're already so beautiful. They already have a lot of variation. And I think that white splatters are all that's really needed here. So this completes the layout, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. Please take a look in the description box. There's a link to the My Creative Scrapbook website and you can check out all of their beautiful kits and they have lots of different kits and they have new ones every month. I hope that everybody has a fantastic day and I hope to see you again soon. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.